Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for November 29th, 2016. I'm your host, Gary Smith. On today's show, we're going to talk to Coach Dunn about this past Saturday's exciting NCAA second round playoff win against Indiana. And then we're going to look at those highlights and then preview this coming week opponent in the Super Region 1 Final Shepherd. But before we get into all that, uh, Coach, welcome to your show. And it's, it's great we're, we're saying it's November 29th and still doing shows. That's a testament for the team continuing to... Uh, Take care of business each and every week. Yeah, what a great week in, in California. You know, we brought IUP back to, to California for a second time this year. I think that's probably the first time that's been done in school history. And, and able to beat those guys again was, was great. Uh, you know, just proud of our guys and excited to be playing December football this weekend. And that's, that's, there's no greater words than December football. And uh, Coach, this past Saturday, um, first we'll talk about, we've been talking a lot on the show this year, um, you know, with the game times and everything. You, you say it's always great to have a routine. Um, game was back at 1 o'clock, but, you know, Karma throws another wrench with Thanksgiving being right in the middle of the week. Going into the week, how was that preparation any different? Did the holiday change preparation or, or, or planning or anything, or was it basically, you know, we know it's a holiday, but we have bigger things to worry about? No, we, we, we changed a little bit. We got our work in, but uh, everything was normal up until Thursday morning. Obviously, we didn't have class, so we brought the guys in for an early practice. We had early meetings, early practice, and then gave them an opportunity to go home with their family for Thanksgiving if they were local. And then a lot of our guys that live local took teammates home with them. Uh, we even had a group of guys that cooked their own Thanksgiving dinner uh -oh. in Vulcan <laughs> Village, which was, was interesting. We had about 12 or 15 guys that, that wanted to stay together and cook their own meal. So luckily nobody got food poisoning and everybody made it to the game. But that kind of changed it up. And then we brought them back in Friday for a normal routine leading up to the game. So really proud of the way the guys worked. There was no distractions. It was all about football when we were here. And then obviously we got some time off for the holiday. And time off, too, because uh, being the number one seed in Super Region 1, you had the bye uh, in the first round of the playoffs. So you could, could kind of sit back and watch and see whether it be IUP or Fairmont State coming to Cal. And uh, IUP took care of Fairmont State, uh, 60, I think it was 62 to 13 or something like that. And as you mentioned, first time in school history, IUP and Cal have played twice in the same year in football. Uh, and that game, the first game, seems like it was about a year ago. And really, with injuries to IUP, you know, to their quarterback, Lane Williams, it's Looked like, at least for us, it was a different team coming in than the team we faced in October. Yeah, obviously, anytime you lose your quarterback and the type of player he is, you know, you've got to change some things up. They they really went to more of a running style and then throwing the play action pass off of that vertical. And and they're a really, really good football team, extremely well coached. And, and obviously, we had our hands full Saturday, especially early. Uh, but they, you know, you could tell that, the, that their quarterback wasn't there, but that's the game of football. I mean, everyone's fighting through injuries this time of year, and, and you know, you've got to have the next guy step up and, and move on. And you mentioned uh, some play action. IEP came out, and I wanted to ask you if they, they came out in the Wildcat and, and formation. Was that something that they had done at all, that you saw on film at all this year? Or was that something that maybe they put in to try and catch, catch us off guard? No, they had done it on film since their quarterback was injured. They didn't do it as much against everybody else as they did against us. You know, it was kind of a splash here and there in the previous weeks where they came out and started the game in that formation. Uh, we were out of our gaps a little bit, uh, and our defensive coaches did a tremendous job of, of shoring that up as the game went on. And then, you know, from the second quarter on, it was we were back to playing California defense and, and just proud of the way those guys battled through that. Yeah, in California, I mean, going down to a 17 nothing hole, um, there, it, it never appeared that there was any panic, at least on either side of the ball. It, it seemed like, you know, okay, 17 nothing. you know, they, I think they kicked a field goal to make it 17 nothing. You know, they, they scored a touchdown 17 nothing, and then basically you guys go out, score a touchdown, and then probably the play that turned the, the game around was a big special teams play where a block punt, uh, ball rolls around, forward lateral, goes out of the end zone. It seemed like the official was doing a dissertation explaining what it was, <laughs> but after all of that, you know, your team had the ball first and goal on the nine-yard line, first play, touchdown run, and, and it seemed like after that, you know, it's business as usual. Yeah, I, the, the block punt was was huge. And I knew we were down 17 nothing. I knew our guys would compete, you know. I had sensed before the game that they were a little tight. You know, the warm-ups were a little bit different. We talked about in the, the locker room before we went out, relax. It's the same as the last 10 games once the ball was kicked off. Uh, and once we settled in, you know, I, I, I felt even though being down 17 nothing early, the type of offense we have, I knew our defense would get it right. Um, and just pride, that shows you the kind of guys that we have and the competing our guys. There was nobody blinking, nobody panicking. We're going to get it straightened out, and that's what we did. The, obviously, the block punt was a huge play for us uh, to get us all the momentum going. 
And then I know we're going to talk about it. We talk about it every week. We score right before the half yeah. to take the lead. I think that's just about every game we've been able to put a touchdown in right before the half to take the lead. You know, And that's tough on the other team. You're up 17 nothing. You turn around and you're down 21-17 at halftime. Knowing that we're getting the ball in the second half, that was the big switch in the game. And that's something, like you said, you've been doing, your team's been doing it all year. Um, and, and another thing your team's been doing all year is, you know, just maintaining possession. I mean, you run a fast, you get to the ball fast, but then you kind of take your time, make your adjustments. But, you know, you're getting to the ball, you're, you're finishing drives. And I think that's the most impressive thing because whenever you're getting the ball, you know, it's either going to be, more often than not, it's either going to be a touchdown or a field goal or, a short kick, and then you're going to, with your defense, it's it's a tough order to have a team go 80, 90 yards consistently on that defense to score. Yeah, Coach Wilson does a great job with our special teams, and, and obviously he wanted to bring pressure when we blocked the kick, and that was big, but field possession was huge all day. We won, we chart, Coach Wilson does a great job of charting our our special teams, and there's four major categories every week, and we, sw we won all four in the kick game, punt game, return game. Uh, in, in explosive plays and special teams, and we won all four of those. It was a big factor. Usually when they started on offense after a touchdown, they were inside the 20, and we were averaged, I think, the 32 or the 33. So you're talking about 15, 20 yards of, of grass every time. And, and, you know, that's what Coach Wilson preaches to our guys, and, and it was a great job all day special teams-wise. And three block kicks pretty much blocked every type of kick you can have in the game, blocked a punt, blocked a field goal, and blocked an extra point. And that blocked field goal was at a point in the game where if they make that – it's a six, I think a 15-point game at that point if they make it block, and I believe after the block kick, your team goes down the other way, and I think that was the drive that uh, you kind of capped it off with the fourth and three fade pattern to Gary Brown. And I tell you what, that offense, uh, I was looking at the numbers. I didn't realize that uh, Mike Keir only had, like I think it was like 23 or 28, and only five or six incomplete passes. That's an efficient, efficient yeah. offense. Mike had a great day, and I thought the other thing huge was, was scoring that first possession in the second half to, to go up two scores. That, that was a, a big point in the game, but Mike had a tremendous day. Obviously, Gary had another tremendous day and, and capped it off with the, his second touchdown of the day down there, uh, the one you're speaking of. So, you know, just all-around team effort. You know, we didn't start out the way we wanted to, but our defense came alive created some field position for us, special teams, some big blocks. You know, we, we had to change up our block unit a little bit this week because of how their kicker follows through the ball. And Coach Wilson and the, and the guys did a great job of adjusting to that, something new, and giving them a different look. And you talk about taking points off the board off of those guys. That's, that was a big, big part of that game. And let's take a look back at this exciting and historic uh, NCAA playoff game, first playoff game for the Cal Vulcans since 2011. And after the break, uh, we'll take a look at this upcoming week's opponent in Super Region 1, uh, the final for the Super Region, the Shepherd Rams. And you're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Play action. Plenty of time to throw it deep down the field, and he does. He's got a receiver open, and it is going to be complete for the touchdown. As Petropola hands it off up the middle to Chris Temple. Temple has a huge hole, and he is going home to the races. That is a touchdown for IUP. Here, looking to pass. Airing it to Gary Brown, and Gary Brown makes the reception, and it's a touchdown for California. First punt for IUP, and it's botched. And that one is blocked. As Keir hands it off, and he finds a hole, and he plows his way into the end zone. It's a California touchdown. What a run by Jalen Bell. As Keir takes a snap, looking to pass. Throwing it over the middle, and that's a touchdown for Luke Smorey. Play action now for Keir. Throwing in the back of the end zone. That is a touchdown, California. Handoff to McCauley, and McCauley gets into the end zone for a California touchdown. Ryan Stewart's kick is blocked. It is blocked, and California once again does a, something on special teams. Here, looking to pass. Going to the end zone. This is caught for the touchdown.
Uh, and he's in the end zone. That's a safety. California scores on defense. I coined my definition of success in 1934. My definition of success is peace of mind attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. It's like reputation and character. Reputation is what others perceive you to be. Character is what you are. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. It starts right when you hit the court. You imagine your finest moment. The game when he shot that gets you to the dance. A monster dunk or no look pass and cutting down the net. Sports lets us dream of our own success and prepare us for our finest moments on and off the court. Division 2 sports on NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division 2 championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division 2 college sports. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show for November 29, 2016. I'm Gary Smith, joined as always by Coach Dunn and Coach uh, we put the wrap up on uh, IEP part two. And first, before I went to, wanted to mention this, thank goodness, uh, with, you know, obviously with team winning, but there were so many people asking, well, is the Cole Trophy on the line? What's going on with that? <laughs> so you took care of any, any questions with, with your team. So on behalf of everyone that filled those questions, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still in the office, and it's, <laughs> it's actually sitting right next to the PSAC Trophy today. So Excellent. Uh, we, we're holding both of those for the, the rest of the year. <laughs> Excellent. Like I said, you'd be surprised at the amount of texts and emails I got just by people saying, you know, we're playing IEP again. What, what happens with the trophy? I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is the question <laughs> I'm getting Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, right. But after the win, uh, of course, you know, California taking care of business uh, in this first playoff game, like I said, since 2011. Uh, your opponent this week, Shepard, if we'll take a look at the bracket, they had to make the long trip to uh, LIU Post, and there's the Super Region 1 bracket. Uh, Shepard was actually the three seed, uh, LIU Post was two, but really, I mean, that could have been a flip-flop in the committee because Shepard obviously is one heck of a team, but as you see, California and Shepard are, are matching up in the Super Region 1 final, and um, we were talking a little off-camera. What have you seen on film so far? I know it's only Tuesday morning, but what have you seen at least offensively? Because this is a team... Shepard, that you know, they're coming off of an NCAA running runner-up last year. They lost in the championship game. Um, they've won a couple Super Region One titles in a row. They're obviously a, a tested playoff tested team. What have you seen on film so far? Really, really well-rounded, great football team. You know, you're, you're you're not playing this time of year an undefeated team if you're not a really good football team. Offensively, uh, very explosive. Got a tremendous quarterback that's that's been doing it for a long time. Got a, a, a near a thousand yard rusher, so they have a strong run game, but really like to throw the ball around. They do a lot of run pass option stuff. They've got a tremendous receiver, he's one of the top receivers in the country, uh, has 20 touchdown passes, and you know, just a balanced offense, but very, very explosive. Uh, put a lot of pressure on defenses. Uh, don't turn it over much. Think their quarterback has five interceptions, 28 touchdown passes on the year. So I can tell you that they're extremely well coached and, and really, really good offense. And you mentioned the receiver, Billy Brown. Uh, that was one of the things we were talking 
uh, with the guys uh, yesterday that, you know, you got two guys, last name of Brown out there. But he's a little bit different player than, than Gary Brown. He's a little bit bigger. Um, what kind of matchups uh, will that bring up for, for Cal for your defense? Because, I mean, he's probably one of the biggest threats, both size-wise and talent-wise, faced all year. Yeah, difficult. That's the kind of matchup we're going to get this week. Uh, big, strong kid that, that uses a lot of body position, can run, can jump. Um, just a complete player. And then they've got some other guys, too. They've got another receiver that's a really, really good football player. So similar to us, you can't focus on just taking him away. You've got to respect everybody, and you've got to defend, the, defend everybody. Uh, but he's going to be a, a matchup problem. He has been for everybody for the last two or three years. You know, of course, Shepard lost in the, in the national championship game last year. They've been ranked in the top five in the, in the country all year. So it's going to be a difficult test. But I know our defense is, is up to the task. And on the other side of the ball, you know, we've talked all year. You know, your team is averaging. We're going to look in a minute about uh, a comparison between the two teams. But uh, what type of defense will the California offense face coming in on Saturday? They're a 4-2-5 uh, base defense. Uh, they do a lot of different things coverage-wise. They like to, to start a two-high look, and then they'll roll some coverages. They'll play some man coverage. Really, really big and athletic up front. Probably the best front four that we faced all year. The, the safeties can run. The linebackers are solid players. Uh, just a really solid defense. I think they're giving up 18 points a game. If, if you know, I'm sure we'll see the, see the graphic. But just, just really, really good defense all the way around. Let's take a look at that tell the tape between the two teams. Uh, since Shepard is not a team, you know, we traditionally play out of the MEC. You see, and I highlighted where the statistical advantages are for the two teams. You see there's an equal number of yellow on both sides. Um, California, I mean, you guys are averaging 51.4 points a game, one of the top numbers in any division in, uh, in NCAA. Rushing yards a game, you have the edge. Passing, they're passing 339. But a lot of time, I mean, you guys are running the clock out a lot. Uh, defense, neither team is allowing more than 18 points a game. For, I think you're probably in the top 10. Probably both teams are in the top 10 in the country. So like I said, both teams pretty much looking like a, a mirror image of one another. Yeah, absolutely. And, th and this time of year, you know, that, that's what you're going to find. You're going to find good, solid offenses, good, good defenses, you know, that play great special teams. You know, and that's what December football is all about. You know, when you're down to eight teams in the entire country, you know, everyone can play at this point. And uh, we'll take a look, as Coach alluded to. There are only eight teams, four games in the country. Let's take a look back at this past week and around the country, uh, what was happening in uh, the NCAA playoffs. We California beating IEP, and we talked about Shepard uh, going to Long Island uh, post, uh, winning 40-21 to uh, out in another super region, Grand Valley State, 55-32 uh, in their team that is constantly in the NCAA playoffs. North Alabama, another powerhouse, 41-17 over UNC Pembroke uh, in the second round. And on the other uh, four games that were played in the country uh, this past Saturday. Uh, Ferris State 38-17 over Colorado Mines. Uh, Northwest Missouri State 44-13 over Emporia State. Uh, one upset Harding over Sioux Falls 27-21. And then North Greenville, probably the biggest uh, story in the playoffs, number six seed in that region, uh, beating Tuskegee 45-26. Uh, to 26. But, Coach, you see on there, though, none of those teams are unfamiliar even to a casual uh, NCAA fan, because it's, even if you don't follow D2, you've heard of, you know, Grand Valley State, you've heard of Northwest Missouri, um, heard of Shepard, heard of California. So it, it, it's time that, you know, uh, good eight teams are left in the, uh, in the playoff field. Yeah, it's, it, it's exciting time. You know, our guys have done a tremendous job all year preparing and, and being ready to put themselves in this situation. We talked to our guys about, you know, before the game, you have an opportunity to earn to play another week. And we had that same opportunity against a, an extremely well-coached Shepherd team. But that's our goal, is to go 1-0 and this week. Since we, we lined up against Cheney in the beginning of the year, our sole focus was, was on California and getting ready to play. And that's what we're talking to our guys about. We're going to focus on us this week. We've got a special teams meeting here in probably about 20 minutes. Uh, we break up in offense and defensive meetings, then we've got practice. We're not changing our schedule. We're keeping everything the same way it is and, and really focusing on controlling what we can control, and that's how we play. And how exciting was it for you on Saturday, you know, your first season as head coach, uh, leading the team to his first NCAA postseason in five years. Obviously, you know, I don't think anybody in the locker room had been in the postseason. How exciting was that for you to give that speech saying, hey, guys, you're going out, you know, we've, we've checked off, won the PSAC West, won the PSAC. Now, you know, we're taking that step to hopefully, you know, make it, to a national championship or go as far as we can, uh, possibly can. Yeah, it, it's a week-to-week -week schedule for us right now, and you forgot to add the Cole Bowl. Cole Bowl, I'm all, sorry, yeah. We always throw the Cole Bowl, <laughs> then the West, then the, the total PSAC. Uh, but, but just great. These guys have worked and worked and worked for this opportunity. 
and for especially for our seniors to have an opportunity to go out and play a home national playoff game and to earn the right to host another one and hopefully play in front of their peers this week. It was a little tough on Thanksgiving break yeah. uh, last week, but just to earn that right to keep playing in the postseason. And that's when, when you sign up in California, that's what you sign up for, an opportunity to win championships, an opportunity to play in the postseason. And, and we're excited that, that we have an opportunity to, to, to play again this week. And one of the nice things, you know, watching as a fan and also in the truck, I mean, you see a lot of smiles on that sideline. I mean, obviously, the winning makes smiling easier, but it seems like everyone's playing for each other. We talked during the highlights, you know, Ron McCauley, touchdown, first touchdown of his career rushing, and you saw as soon as he got up, the entire offensive line, the entire offense was, you know, trying to beat one another to, to, to congratulate and hug him. So that, that's something that, you know, that's great to see because everyone's playing for one another. Yeah, our guys are, have really bought into it, and, and both sides of the ball and special teams – you know, they're, they're all one. And, and our defense knows if, if maybe they give up a touchdown, then our offense is going to pick them up. And, and offensively, we're not moving the ball. We know our defense is going to hold the line for us. So, you know, it's been as, as fun a year as I've had in, in my 20-plus years of college coaching, just being around these guys every day. Every day is a, a fun day to be around. We went up and practiced last evening, and, and, you know, you'd have thought it was the first week of the season. Usually by this time of year, you're pulling teeth. But our leadership has really stood up all year, and, and it's, it's just been a fun bunch to be around. And it's been a great season to watch. And as Coach mentioned this past Saturday, you know, it was tough with uh, Thanksgiving, but uh, everyone used their, their holiday excuse. So come on out this Saturday, Adamson Stadium, uh, as we're going to see the other three games, uh, 1 o'clock at Adamson, California, number one seed in Super Region 1 versus number three Shepherd uh, Around the country, uh, North Alabama will be hosting North Greenville. All these games are 1 o'clock. Uh, Northwest Missouri State versus Harding at one, and then Grand Valley State versus Ferris State. Um, and you see in the bottom, uh, this is, I believe, the first, maybe second year the teams will be receded. So um, can't worry about that. Got to take care of what's going on. But uh, make sure to come out on Saturday, 1 o'clock. I uh, have not seen the weather. Um, it's going to be beautiful. Coach said it's going to be beautiful, and uh, he hasn't he hasn't been wrong yet. So uh, probably in the offseason we're going to get him on a new center as a weather person, <laughs> if possible. But you see there, uh, December 3rd, 1 o'clock. Um, you see the broadcast pending, the way the paperwork and things work when you get the NCAAs, uh, you have to submit bids, and sometimes as of Tuesday morning as we're shooting the show, um, we haven't got any emails back yet. But I will say that any information will be on CalValkins.com as soon as it's out. Uh, do know the game will more than likely be on radio on uh, 91.9 FM online, and then, um, like I said, pr more than likely CUT will be doing the broadcast, but we got to wait and hear the official word from the NCAA. So like I said, you can check out uh, Matt Kiefer and his staff with all the information on CalValkins.com. And, Coach, uh, any final thoughts to try and get uh, people in the stands? It's going to be exciting December football. When I was, whenever I got at the stadium Saturday, uh, I was there, you know, whenever the sun was basically kind of, at least for me, I'm not a morning person, but, I mean, I had a little bit of spring in my step, and I'm just punching buttons. I can uh, it's, I only imagine what it's like for you guys in the locker room. So uh, what, how, what can we do to get the fans yeah. to come out? I, you know, I think it's a really exciting and fun team to watch, and, and, and playoff atmosphere is a little bit different. Every play, you can kind of feel it. And uh, students, you were just home for a couple days. Your parents are probably sick of you, so stay here for the weekend. Have a nice tailgate out there. It's going to be beautiful weather. We had a great alumni turnout this past week. I know a lot of guys are coming back, but we need the students. We need to fill up that student section. We need to rock Adamson, and, and hopefully we'll get some things going this week for you. But just excited you guys are back on campus, and this bunch could use some support. And come on out, like Coach said, it's, it's been a fun season to watch, fun group to watch. Um, you know, it's a great weekend of college football, end of the season. December football is fun football. So hopefully you come on out. And like I said, keep checking CalValkins.com for all the information uh, pertaining to the game. So for Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. We hope to see you in uh, black and red on Saturday, making it loud for uh, – the opposing Shepherd Rams. We'll see you next week. And you've been watching the Coach Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.